Marco Rigo was head of quality at Illy Cafe for over 30 years. He's known as the barista's barista, coffee explorer, and proprietor of the bar Termini, where we are sitting today. An espresso coffee. Yes. Is there such a thing as the perfect espresso? Uh, occasionally, it's perfect. And I think that if you're really into your espresso, you, you're always chasing that kind of magical one. You must start with the best coffee you can. The, most, the, the best coffee you can afford. You never make a good coffee with a bad coffee. You need a good machine and a good barista. And there's, there's the sort of three fundamentals. Yes, but there's, there's those are the fundamentals, but within those, there are an almost invariable... Oh, and the water, the pressure, the temperature, the, okay. and the nightlife of the barman. So what should the water be? We use a special filter here, which puts a little bit of magnesium from a company called BWT, and we find that that little bit of magnesium in the water makes the crema double what it should be. These are the real sort of barista's tricks, aren't they? Or rather, not tricks, but they are Se skills. Secrets, secrets. <laughs> really. <laughs> and uh, what about the sort of water temperature, the, the, the grind of the coffee? All these things make a massive impact on the coffee. I mean, the, the, the grind and the temperature I mean, the temperature of the, the temperature is 88 to 92. It's got to be within that window. Mm -hmm. The grind is the speed at which the coffee comes out. So if you have the coffee, we like the coffee really fine and really slow, mm -hmm. super slow. And, uh, th this particular machine doesn't burn the coffee, so we can go slower than anyone else and make it very sweet. And that, and that brings out the sort of full roundness, the chocolatey notes and all the other uh, if uh, complexity. You have perfect coffee. Okay. But if you have a bad coffee, it will bring out all the imperfections, all the nasty qualities of the coffee. So every time you make an espresso, you're trying to make the same one as you made last time. Yeah. So it's a consistency, which is You're trying to part. recreate this chemical experiment over and over again. We're trying to mix oil and water. Oil and water don't want to mix. So why is it that sometimes you can do this you know, to absolute perfection and something where it's those sublime moments you were talking about? Sometimes the sun, the moon and the stars are all in line and that. <laughs> and sometimes you got to bed at three and the coffee's been left out too long and the machine's not been cleaned and the water has been sitting there and sometimes it's not. And, that, <laughs> and the thing is, it's, it's about freshness, it's about the thing moving. I know that machines have an enormous part to play in, you know, in the making mm. coffee. And things become so technical now. That, do you need, actually need a barista? Yeah, capsules yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and machines and technology. It's not like a Tesla that drives itself. It needs someone to drive it. It's a Lamborghini, but you need a good driver. And it's a, it's a massive fact. They, they, they talk about the four M's. So why is the Kramer so important? It's a byproduct of the chemical reaction. What you're doing on the coffee machine, you're recreating this chemical reaction over and over and again perfectly, just like a robot. Yeah. You do the same thing over and over. But it sort of begs the question, doesn't it? Is it should that Kramer be the defining quality? No, it means the chemical reactions work. Yes. It doesn't mean it's good quality coffee at all. No. It just means you've done something right, now let's taste it. What are the sort of things that you should be feeling on your in your tongue and on your mouth and your taste buds? Really good espresso is all at the front of your mouth. It's all under your tongue. It's yeah. really round and smooth, yeah. like a good red wine. Bad red wine, back of the throat, roof of the mouth. Straight to the brain. Yeah, straight to the back. <laughs> straight to the back of your throat. And it's not that smooth uh, chocolate, tobacco, old school kind of flavour. There's a, this shouldn't be fruity. Yeah. Let's stop this fruity thing. Fruity is a, was a defect, and you can be too fruity. If it's not, it shouldn't be anything. It should be a balance, a perfect balance of acid, sweet, and bitter. And if it's not, it's not a proper espresso. And when somebody says this one's very sweet, it's, it's not balanced. It seems to me is that, is that coffee is this <coughs> extraordinary thing where science and passion seem to meet. The way you talk about it, the, the, the techniques, the, the analysis, the chemical analysis, and so on and so forth, is an extraordinary degree of specialist knowledge, but at the same time, it's all about love in the end. Actually, I got a lot of this from a chemist because I was saying I, I, I froth the milk and I don't know why, but I stick it in the fridge for 30 seconds and then it splits nicely. And then he would go, yeah, because the molecules are shortening. <laughs> and he would explain to me what was... And I, just as a barman, knew how to do these things, but I didn't know why. It was great to have a chemist constantly telling you why. 
you understand what, what you just did? No, I know I can do this time and time again, but I don't know what I'm doing. And then he would be put that into words, which was nice, because then it would add to my repertoire, and I'd go, oh, I'm doing this clever thing. <laughs>